everyone. Today's topic is iOS tables. So let's get started. So what are some of the primary table features that you can use in your iOS apps? Well, first I wanna point out the class names that you're most likely to see is of course iOS table and iOS table cell data or uh, the data that's actually displayed in the table. And a table gives you a scrolling list of data. It is, however, generally speaking, single column. Unlike, say, if you use a list box in a desktop app or a web app. And there can be main and detailed text. So here you can see a very simple table set up with uh, some main text, some detailed text underneath it that's slightly smaller. And, uh, and it's a single, single column, essentially, of data. A table can also have accessories that appear on the right side. So in this view here, you can see there is a check mark accessory that appears. And that can be toggled on and off by row. Uh, there can also be a detail accessory that looks like that uh, eye with a circle in it. And sometimes, depending on the version of iOS, the, the general appearance of these accessories might uh, change slightly. And then there's a... Uh, the simple general purpose disclosure accessory. And the, the purpose of these are just to uh, generally provide a way when a row is tapped to indicate that uh, another view is going to get displayed with some other information. So for simple usage of a table, you're just going to drag the table onto your layout. You can add data using the add row method. And you can uh, use iOS table cell data for setting uh, detail text and accessories, but you can actually ignore that if you're uh, just setting the main text. I don't care about any of this other stuff. And that's pretty much it. I do want to point out though, for the simple usage, you don't want to have too many rows in your table when you're doing it that way, as the iOS may start to bog down. So instead, you're going to want to use it using the normal usage, which is the same sort of thing. You're going to drag your table onto a layout, but instead you're going to use a data source to add your data to the table. And a data source means the data can come from anything. This will be a special thing you create that uh, serves as the source for the data. But you then tell the table to use the data source, and then iOS will pull the data from the data source as it needs it, so it's much more efficient. And to do that, you implement an interface, the iOS table data source interface, which has several methods that you can put your code to uh, return the values that are necessary uh, so that the table can display things. And for more advanced usage of a table, you can have things like row actions. So here you can, uh, for example, swipe left on a row in a table and you can get uh, little indicator buttons that can let you do something with the row. And you can also uh, enable row editing and reordering, which gives you a slightly different user interface here when you enable that mode. You get those little uh, gadgets on the right-hand side that you can uh, tap on and drag to reorder the rows in the table. And you get the minus button on the left that you can tap to remove a row from the table. And you can also, uh, that, that's done using the iOS table data source editing uh, interface. And the reordering interface is related to that. You can also have your own custom cell data, as you can see here in this uh, screenshot. And this lets you get around the uh, the single column uh, default that a table has. By defining your own custom cell data, you can essentially display whatever you want within the table. So this custom cell data can have other controls in it. Uh, this particular one you can see here has a label, a button, and a canvas. It's just showing a, a colored rectangle. But you can design what you want there and you can lay it out how you want. So you can get pretty flexible with your table designs when you start doing custom cell data. And there's a 
class here that's very similar to a container control that you can use to create your custom cell data layout. And you can also even have these custom cells have varying row heights, again, for more flexibility. All right, so let's switch over to Zojo and take a look at a few projects. So here I have a simple example. This one is just gonna populate a table and it'll show the checkmark accessory. So you can see here there's a table that is on the view and it has an action event handler that toggles the uh, accessory. But let's look at the load data method first. So you can see here, uh, there always needs to be a, uh, an initial sec section in a table. So in this case, we don't really care about the section, so we're just going to add it with uh, an empty string here. And then we can add the rows we want. So we had uh, 51 rows. And you can see here it is creating a cell, calling the create cell method to get a uh, cell data, which is an iOS table cell data. And then it can set the properties on it. So in this case, it wants to set the main text and then it'll uh, set the accessory type. And then it just adds the row uh, directly to the table. So pretty simple and straightforward, probably similar to what you've seen if you used uh, any of the list box controls on other project types. And then the action event is called when uh, one of the table rows is tapped and it provides you the information as to which section and that was tapped and which row in the section. And here, all this code is going to do is uh, toggle the, uh, the check mark on or off and then reload the row so that it redisplays. So if we run that, You can see the list here. I can scroll it. And if I tap on a particular row, I can toggle the check marks on or off. So that is how you might use a table at its very most simplest way, is by dragging it onto your layout and essentially calling add row to populate it with some data. And like I mentioned before, if you are gonna use add row and go this, this more simpler route, uh, that's fine, but you do want to keep your row count you know, under control. So I would say you know, at most 100 rows if you're going this route, uh, maybe even uh, fewer would be better. But you certainly don't want lots and lots and lots of rows. It'll just use up uh, too much memory, and uh, most of the mobile devices don't have as much memory to play with as uh, typical computers, so you don't want to waste it in that manner. All right, so let's take a look at this example here. This one is using a data source to get its data, uh, data to display what it needs here. So same thing, we've got a, a table that is on the view. And the only code that it has here is on its open event where it is uh, telling it what the data source is. So here I'm uh, creating, the data source is actually this baseball teams class that's over here. And so I'm creating a new instance of that. And then I'm assigning it to the data source property of the, uh, of the table. And I did put this in a property itself, as you can see here, to make sure that uh, it's, everything stays in scope. Uh, so that just was a local variable. Uh, due to the memory management, it will actually go out of scope and you won't get any data that's uh, showing in your table. So the baseball teams class, it's just a regular class, uh, but it does implement this interface here, iOS table data source. And when you add that interface to it, it adds uh, most of these methods here, uh, except for the constructor. And in this particular case, this data is, is actually hard-coded into the class itself. And that's uh, all created in the constructor here. So you can see it's essentially doing it in a variety of arrays, uh, putting all the 
major league baseball teams in here. And then the various methods we just implement to return the values that make sense for however your data source is organized. So in this particular case, uh, the, uh, this is the row count for a particular section. So it is calling uh, some code here to get the, the count of the items that are in that array for the specific section. We'll get back to row data in a moment. Uh, the section count is just the number of uh, things that we've had as sections. And the title is calling uh, a method, the private method I've created here that looks up the number and returns an actual text for the section. And the row data method itself, which actually is going to return the data that will be displayed in the table, is fetching that also from the array and then creating a cell and then setting the cell's text to the, the value from the array. So again, not a lot of specific code in here, but it's organized as the data source to allow the table to be more efficient with how it requests it and then uh, thus displays it. And you can see here how everything is populated. So you can see the sections up here in bold and I can scroll down through all the data. And that all uh, kind of works how you expect. There's no code in here to do anything when you tap on a row. So right now it's just, uh, just highlighted. All right, next. Uh, let's take a quick peek at this one, the table actions example. So again, you see a similar pattern here. The yeah, table is actually on the view, of course, and then there'll be some level of code uh, to set things up. So again, here there's code to set up the data source. And that is uh, using this table data class. And this is a much simpler data source, which is just uh, set up as an array. So that makes all of these uh, methods quite a bit simpler. Uh, and you can see this one here. There's always just one section. We don't care about that. And uh, the section title has no title. so all we care about there. But the important things to note here for implementing uh, the actions are you can define them here. So here you can see that we uh, created the actions and uh, we add them to this array that gets returned at the end. And one of the actions is flag and one is archive and you can tell the type of action it is whether it's a normal or destructive action which will change how it uh, is shown in the UI. And then, so that's the setup, and then the row action event is called when uh, the user actually initiates one of the actions. And then you can check which action was chosen, and then you can choose to do something. So we can see here we have a list, short list that you saw in the array. So if I swipe here, action appears, and I get the two buttons, uh, the destructive one uh, showing in red. And then if I tap one, in this case, it's just telling you which one you tap. It's not actually doing anything in particular, but uh, you can see how that works. And users love row actions. They're a fast way to get things done. Unfortunately, not super discoverable the user has to know to actually swipe on something to see what might happen. So you may need to include some helpful tips or some way to, to guide them on that if they're not familiar with your app. Related somewhat to actions are table editing. And this is where you uh, 
put your table in a state where its contents can be modified. Not like inline text editing necessarily, but uh, you can change the ordering, you can remove uh, rows. So again, you do have to use a data source in order to take advantage of this. And you can see here, the setup is a little different. We got a extra thing here, an edit button up here on the uh, toolbar. And you can see when the edit button is pressed, we're turning on um, editing enabled for the table. And we're also changing the caption so that it says uh, done. Uh, so you can tap that to turn the editing uh, back off, essentially. And the other thing to note is in the data source, there's an uh, additional, not really additional, but other interfaces you might want to, you know, that you would want to use because they'll add a few extra methods for you to implement. So the editing and the reordering interfaces here. And you can see those add additional methods here that you can return values for. So this one, it will be, you can return true to say yes, that particular row can be moved. And then you'll get an, a, a method call when the row is actually moved and you can reorganize your data source to match how the, the row was actually moved in the user interface. And uh, again, very simple uh, initial data that uh, doesn't have a lot of code on each individual thing because we're just dealing with a, a simple array that we can easily modify. And if we run this, you can see what the UI looks like. So we've got our list, and if I press the edit button, the table's put into edit mode. And in this case, that allows uh, both of the indicators here to appear. So this indicator is the drag reorder indicator, so I can tap on that and then drag a row around. And then this, of course, is the delete indicator, which when you press, you get a confirmation button that you can press. And then I can add an additional row. Uh, I think I only have it hard-coded to add the, the PlayStation row, but uh, you can see how it added in there with the little animation and everything. And then I can press done to get rid of all that uh, uh, modal interface and get back to the normal display of the values. So that's how table editing works. And the last one I want to show you is custom cells. So here again, we have a table on our view. Same setup with the, uh, the data source. But this data source is going to use a custom cell. So I've created one right here. And you can see this is uh, an iOS custom table cell. And you can actually find these here in the uh, library. Uh, they'll be down with the other um, controls because this is not uh, actually the other project items. This isn't directly a control, so you'd actually put this into your library, uh, into your uh, navigator like I have it here. And then essentially it works like a uh, container control where I can just put other things on it. So here there's a label, here is a button, and this is uh, it's actually an image view that's just uh, showing a uh, simple colored rectangle. And if you look at the setup back in the, uh, the data source, row data, you might recall, is where the data that's displayed is actually created. And here you can see we're getting the initial data. But the change here is the call to the create custom cell method. And you'll notice it is using this uh, get type info on the actual name of the class, team custom cell. And then we, we just cast it into the, uh, the appropriate uh, variable so we can access its properties. 
And then we can set its name. We can create the image here to assign to the, uh, the image view. And, and that's pretty much it. That uh, custom cell will now be returned here and thus displayed in the table uh, when it runs. And you can also see the code on the button here is actually on the custom cell itself. And it's just going to display a message that cheers on whatever team you happen to click. Bye. So you can see what that looks like here. So same structure from uh, the original data source example, but essentially multiple columns of data here. If I click on one of the buttons, it comes back with a message box and uh, displays the message. And uh, this is where you can start to create some really nice uh, layouts, table layouts to work uh, in your apps. Because obviously just showing a, a single list of information uh, can be useful, but uh, um, often you want to show more than that. And by using custom cells, you are able to. All right, so what's next? Well, of course, you can always grab the latest version of Zojo at zojo.com slash download. And be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash go Zojo. You can subscribe. You can click the little bell button to be notified when new uh, videos are posted. Uh, we do put up videos pretty regularly. So uh, if you do want to be notified when that happens, do subscribe there. If you are new to Zojo, be sure to check out the introduction to programming book at zojo.com slash learn, which does have a, an addendum for iOS development that you can also read. I always like to point out our Zojo user community at forum.zojo.com, a great place to ask questions or help others. And if you want to learn more about iOS tables, you can always, of course, go to our docs at docs.zojo.com. Uh, there's a big topic in the user guide on iOS table that covers a lot of the things I talked about today. And all of the examples that I showed and many others are included with Zojo here in this folder, iOS controls table. Well, you'll find all of these and several others, including uh, database ones and uh, other ways you can use a table. If you have questions on this or really anything Zojo related, you can always reach me, paul at zojo.com. That's my email. And of course, on Twitter, I'm at Lefevre. And our company account is at Zojo. So we love to hear from people. And I want to thank everyone for watching. Have a great day.